A Montana couple fears the state took their daughter to Wyoming so she could access gender transition treatments. A proposed bill would require parental permission for kids to access social media. And a wildlife underpass near KC could save the lives of hundreds of mule deer and make highways safer for people, too. We'll take a look at these stories and more today from Wyoming's largest news organization. I'm Wendy Kaur for Cowboy State Daily. A Montana couple is claiming their state's child protection agency seized their daughter, who said she wanted to live as a boy, and placed her in a Wyoming facility where there are no laws banning gender treatments for kids. Cowboy State Daily's Claire McFarland reports that Krista and Todd Kolstad's daughter began expressing suicidal ideations since last year. The child protective agency was saying that they needed to get her into some sort of residential group home treatment setting and that there was a good avenue for that in Wyoming. And so it wasn't put to the parents like we have to get her to Wyoming and get her a double mastectomy. It was put to the parents like we have to get her treatment. But the parents were worried about transitioning in Wyoming because the state has such lax laws. It has really no laws addressing this other than a ban on female genital mutilation under our assault statutes. A Casper lawmaker says the potential for social media to harm kids should make it required in Wyoming for parents to get permission to use it. Political reporter Leah Wolfson spoke with Representative Steve Harshman, who's also a father of four and a high school teacher. Harshman is introduced to bill for the upcoming legislative session that would require parental consent for anyone younger than 18 to use social media in Wyoming. Numerous studies have shown up to say that social media can be a negative influence in uh, children's lives, whether teenagers or even younger. So what the bill does is basically it requires parental consent to be able to use any of these social media programs. Similar legislation is already passed in states like Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, Utah and Ohio. When word got out about the homes that were devastated by a water main break on Darnell Place in Cheyenne, one resident took it upon himself to make a difference. Cowboy State Daily's Renee Jean met up with Landon Medina, just a working class guy with 21,000 Facebook followers, who decided to address the needs of the families affected by the flooding. He was making a list and checking it twice, just like Santa Claus. He's got donations of food from people in the Cheyenne community. He had $20 bills. He was kind of sneaking into the boxes for people. It's not his job to do this. He's not a city worker. He's not an elected official. He's not the mayor of Cheyenne. He's just this middle class guy like you and I with a regular job. But he's using his free time to crowdsource some help for these families. Medina and his wife are setting up a phone tree with volunteers from his Facebook page, Connections Cheyenne, who will be calling Cheyenne businesses to ask for donations for an upcoming online auction to benefit the families. I'll be back with more news right after this. Do you know it's illegal to dig or excavate without knowing what's below? This is Jan Warren, Executive Director for One Call of Wyoming. We will be hosting workshops around the state to educate homeowners, realtors, landscapers, underground facility owners, and excavators on the state law, industry best practices, when it comes to planting a tree, building a fence, or any other excavation project you have planned. Join us for a free breakfast, get your questions answered, and learn how One Call of Wyoming is here to help. Go to onecallofwyoming.com and register today. A section of I-25 between KC and Buffalo is known as Wyoming's second deadliest stretch of highway for mule deer. But Cowboy State Daily's Mark Hines reports that $4.4 million and 36 miles of fencing are expected to eliminate hundreds of deer vehicle collisions a year. This project involves uh, building, I believe, uh, 18 miles of fence on either side of the highway. So a total of 32 miles of fence in some other infrastructure to kind of funnel or encourage the animals to head towards those underpasses and use those instead of trying to run across the pavement and get struck and hit by vehicles. Hines reports that a conservative estimate places the numbers of animals killed on Wyoming's highways each year as up to as many as 6,000. And there's no such thing as an emergency room drive through but that didn't stop a Powell woman from making her own. Cowboy State Daily's Andrew Rossi reports that Nicole Sewer caused about $20,000 worth of damage when she drove her car through two sets of automatic glass doors to the emergency department at Powell Valley Healthcare over the weekend. She was arrested on site, believed to be intoxicated, so she's facing a few felonies and a few misdemeanors associated with that. Powell Valley Healthcare spokesman Jim Cannon said they hope to have the damage repaired within three to five weeks. And that's today's news. Get your free digital subscription to Wyoming's only statewide newspaper by hitting the subscribe button on CowboyStateDaily.com. I'm Wendy Kaur for Cowboy State Daily.